Hey everybody and welcome to Board Online Board Offline. Today we've got our annual top list of solo games. Now last year we only went to five, this year I'm pushing it out to nine. With my top list I always try to do uh, no more than 20% of the games that I've played in that category. At this point I've played 48 different solo games or soloable games I should say so like for instance cooperative games they can all be played solo for the most part uh, then there's some a, a few games that are solo only actually solo only games there might only be one that I've played but anyway the point is that uh, there's been 48 games that are solo capable uh, that I've played and so now we're gonna be doing a top nine in nine minutes my favorite solo games of all time and so we're going to get right into that list before we do though i do want to mention our sponsor board game co this is a website where you can buy sell and trade games it all is right there internalized on their website they have uh, detailed instructions and, and explanations for how the entire system works you can buy games from them they have great prices and a great selection you can sell games to them they're going to give you competitive prices considering when you, when you take into account shipping and everything and in fact sometimes if you uh you know send more than one game you might get a better deal so be sure to check out how all that works and you can trade games over there they'll link right up to your board game geek account and see uh to build a trade list for you so be sure to check all of that out over a board game code click on the link in the description below so they know i sent you Board Game Co. is a great place to buy, sell, and trade your way into a better collection. Also, these t-shirts are over at Mr. Meeple. Be sure to check them out as well. I've got all kinds of t-shirts that I've really enjoyed having from them, so be sure to check them out as well. That's Mr. Meeple. Okay, so now we're going to get right into our top nine in nine minutes, starting right now. Okay, so number nine is Root. Now, this is a game that wasn't on the list last year. I hadn't played it yet. And Root is a just a, a wonderful, wonderful four-player game. However, they have what's called the Better Bot Project, which adds all these really uh, um, well-made AIs so you can play against any of the other factions. I always play against four of them, or three at a time, plus me, that's four. And not only that, but now that was a fan-made uh, system, and now over at uh, Leader Games, they have taken that and they have created, they have refined it into an official expansion that allows you to play uh, solo with the game. It is a a game where every faction is completely different. They all have different ways of winning they have different ways of getting points different ways of attacking maybe some of them don't want to attack as much some of them just want to control the areas they're all trying to take over the forest and be the species that dominates the forest that is root number eight is tapestry now tapestry is a brand new game from stonemeyer games got i i received my copy just in time for to make this list I've played it numerous times already. I have really, really enjoyed it. It is a, uh, it's, it's an engine building game with a sieve painting on top of it. You don't really get that sieve vibe from it other than just in, you know, kind of what the cards are and that sort of thing. If it is a sieve game, it's definitely an alternate history since you can get all kinds of technology way out of order from how it happened in real life but you're, uh, it's kind of got a tile laying aspect to it. It's got a bit of a, um, uh, a spatial aspect to it on your personal board. You're just scoring victory point after victory point. If you don't score close to 200 points, then you're probably doing something wrong and are not gonna win the game. The, the, uh, the AI that comes with it is from the Ultima Factory, which of course makes AIs for all of Stonemaier games, uh, games these days. And it is my 
favorite AI so far. Uh, I feel like they just keep getting better and better every time they make an AI. My previous favorite AI from them was for Euphoria, which was the one they made before uh, Tapestry. So that is Tapestry from Stonemaier Games. Number seven is Mansions of Madness Second Edition. Now Mansions of Madness is a app-driven game where you start off on a single tile, you have no idea what the rest of the map's gonna be. When you explore the next room, the app tells you what tiles to put out. It's got that Cthulhu vibe, it's got the horror vibe. You've got your investigators trying to solve what's going on, trying to survive. Sometimes maybe you just need to escape. It, it has all different stories. There's so many different scenarios now, lots of different expansions for the game, lots of different monsters. The minis are a little bit wonky. They certainly are not up to par with what we've come to expect in this day and age for miniatures but it makes up for it in the story and the atmosphere. It is such a fantastic fun game that's Mansions of Madness second edition. Number six is Midara. Now Midara is a massive, massive game from uh, Succubus Publishing. It's their first game. They just finished up another successful Kickstarter to uh, republish the, uh, 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 the first chapter, which is what I have, or the first, I believe it's called chapter. And they have two more uh, that have come out now after that. Not chapter though. Anyway, point is uh, acts. That's what it is. First act, they have two more acts now. And there's so many miniatures, so much to unlock in the game. It is not a, um, uh, it's not a, what's the word? Uh, basically it is a campaign game. All right, it's, it's uh, not a legacy game. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh my gosh, I'm wasting time. And it has a storybook, which is also the guide to go through the scenarios that thick. I believe, was it 500 pages? I believe is what it is. It's basically a, a uh, Harry Potter novel. So much story. This game has literally sometimes you've got uh, eight, nine, 10 pages of story in between each scenario. It's unbelievable. If you like a heavy, heavy story in your game, check out Madara. Next up is Kingdom Death Monster. Kingdom Death Monster is a, a horror game from uh, 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 King Death. It's a horror game where you are these survivors and you're trying to um, uh, figure out what in the world's going on. You, you wake up and you don't even, you can't even speak, but then you have to fight off this monstrous lion that has human-like hands and then as you play you discover a settlement and you start building up that settlement learning all these very very rudimentary technologies and uh, you you then you know are, are tearing the monsters apart when you kill them and using their body parts their bones their skin to create weapons create armor create clothing and as you go you keep you you know you have a settlement phase where your your survivors are uh, you're, you're building families, you're having babies, you're, you're trying to just do whatever you can to make the settlement survive. That's Kingdom Death Monster. Next up is Seventh Continent. This is a exploration game where the world is, is fixed in terms of geography. It is exactly the same, but, but where you travel in it, where you go for each different scenario, which are called curses, is very different the the different you know stories you might encounter the different uh, 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 creatures you might have to fight you go hunting uh, you you have to go and you might encounter a man sleeping in a hut or maybe the next time the hut's empty and each time you play little different things happen and it is uh, just a game of mystery that as you play you're constantly uncovering new things you didn't see before and that is the seventh continent my number four favorite solo game number three brand new to the list highest new game to the list pax emancipation this was the most difficult game for me to get into part of that is because of the way phil eklund writes his rule books and part of it is because this game has a lot of nuance and a lot of uh, i heard someone refer to a game as opaque recently and I think that applies here because when I first started playing, I couldn't see what I was, like, what do I need to do to win? Like, I, I couldn't quite figure out. I had to play through one, maybe two games to really understand, oh, here's here's what I need to be doing to be even moderately successful. You're, you are 
uh, going through the world and trying to uh, free slaves back in the 18, 1700s to early 1900s, I think is the time frame, something like that. And you were the British Empire or the philanthropists or even uh, evangelicals going around, around the world trying to outlaw slavery throughout the world. And as you're doing this, you are freeing slaves, but then you're dealing with the pushback from, you know, the local governments, the local societies. Uh, you have, you know, the, the entire map laid out in front of you of the entire world, and then it can modernize as you're playing, and you can free slaves, you can tear down barriers, and that is Pax Emancipation. Number two is Mage Knight. Uh, but considered by many to be the best solo game of all time. It is a fantastic experience. I've played it with two players. I would never play it with more than two players. I prefer it with one player. Mage Knight is absolutely amazing. It is uh, got a little bit of a deck building aspect to it. You are this ultra powerful Mage Knight going through the land, just whooping ass basically. And there's lots of different scenarios you can play. The base scenario is that you're searching out these two cities and you're trying to take them over. And uh, you encounter monsters, you encounter all kinds of creatures. You can uh, go to a monastery and, you know, work with the people in the monastery or burn the monastery down and take the relic that they're hiding. That's Mage Knight. And number one is Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven continues to be just a fantastic game. I've got to work my way through this, the, through the campaign so I can finally play the expansion campaign that I bought. And I haven't gotten even close to that. Gloomhaven is such a deep, thinky, game as far as card playing you have this hand of cards and that's your life that well no, that's not that's not true it's not your life it's more like your stamina but if you run out of cards then you you are, are de dead if you lose all your life you're dead all kinds of crazy monsters 96 scenarios in the base game i think so many components and that is my time but gloomhaven is just so fantastic so much to do in gloomhaven really really love it um i haven't even seen half of the 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 uh, unlockable classes in gloomhaven it's there's just so much going on there that is my top nine best solo games of all time i hope you enjoy this list if you like any of the games you heard be sure to check the, uh, the links in the description below for where you can purchase these games and just a little bit of that will go to the channel to help us continue improving our uh, video quality or sound quality everything we're, we're co constantly trying to get a little bit better uh, you can also find me over on Twitter, at Board Offline. If you like this video and you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe, please thumbs up the video, and until next time, if you're bored online, Board Offline.